Hi, I'm Mark from Split Second, and in this video we are going to go into the lab with the FC2-100. The FC2-100 is a frequency clamp, very similar to a voltage clamp, which is used to prevent fuel cut. The difference is the frequency clamp is used on frequency signals, and increasingly manufacturers are using sensors that produce frequency outputs, and that's why we need frequency clamps. So a classic example would be uh, a modern engine with ECU that you convert to forced induction with either a turbo or supercharger. And you have a mass flow sensor that outputs a frequency. Let's say it's nominally zero to 10 kilohertz. And at some point when you go into boost, the flow goes so high that it actually faults, causing fuel cut. So the fix for that is to add the frequency clamp, adjust it correctly, so that the ECU never sees that reading where it will fault, and you prevent the fuel cut from happening. Now it turns out the FC2 is a very versatile device, so uh, I'm going to go through uh, some of the different modes of operation, um, and we're going to give you an idea of what it's doing. After I uh, go through that on the whiteboard, we're going to go into the lab and, and see how it works on the test bench. Inside the device, there are dip switches, labeled 1 through 6, that are used to configure the device. There's a single adjustment, uh, a 20 turn potentiometer, and then there's a test point you can use to measure uh, the voltage uh, at that point with your digital voltmeter. So the basic idea is that there are all these frequency ranges going from 100 hertz full scale all the way up to 15 kilohertz. So these first three switches are just selected in this sort of simple binary uh, combination to pick the frequency range, 100 hertz, a kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 15. So up here around 10 kilohertz, 15 kilohertz, these would be the ranges you would normally use with a mass flow sensor. And then these lower ranges would be more the type of frequency range you would use with either uh, a vehicle speed sensor or uh, maybe a TAC uh, sensor reading, which tends to be uh, at the lower frequency ranges. So having the selection of all these different frequency ranges makes it possible to use the FC2 on a wide range of signals that you encounter on a vehicle. So we can clamp, it is a frequency clamp after all, um, and you can clamp, based on switch five here, you can clamp to either a high or low frequency. So if the signal increases with load or flow, you wanna set a maximum. Um, uh, if the signal decreases with load or flow, you wanna set a minimum, and you select that either a high or low clamp with switch five. And you can also select the output pulses to be either uh, pulses that go zero to five volts or zero to battery. So you can set the output levels with switch four. And then switch six can be used to select whether you wanna do limiting, like a, like a voltage clamp limits, the frequency will clamp um, if you put it on a limit or if you turn on switch six, one meaning on, you switch over into calibrate mode. So now what we can do is adjust how we shift frequency, and this can be used to calibrate uh, speedometer signals with different size tires, for example, so that if the pulses are, say, going a zero to 100 hertz, uh, and you that's reading a little high in the speedometer, maybe you can turn this and uh, maybe it goes zero to 95 hertz, or zero to 90 hertz, and that changes the reading on the speedometer and adjusts for the tire size. So there's a quick overview, and let's go in the lab and see it in action. This is the FC2-100 frequency clamp, and we're gonna connect it here in the lab and see what it does. Before we do, we'll have a look inside at the settings that I've already made. I turned on switches one and two, and switch three is off. That configures us for a 10 kilohertz full scale range. Switch four is off, which means the output high voltage is gonna be 12 volts. Switch five is off, meaning that we're gonna clamp to a high level. 
and switch 6 is off, meaning we're in clamp mode, not calibrate mode. Note that there's a 20 turn potentiometer here and a test point that we can uh, measure with our digital voltmeter on DC volts. And we can use the voltage that we set this potentiometer to to determine what the clamp voltage, or pardon me, the clamp frequency will be uh, at the output. So for example, let's say I'm on a 10 kilohertz full scale range and I set this voltage to four volts, four out of five is 80%, and 80% of my 10 kilohertz full scale range is eight kilohertz, and I'll clamp at eight kilohertz. So let's have a look and see how that works. So we will start by connecting the black wire to ground, the red wire to battery plus, Yellow is our input frequency, and yellow with a black stripe is the output frequency. And we'll turn on the power. We're going to use this meter to measure the output frequency. And I've got my generator here. Let's set it to a 10 kilohertz full scale range. And uh, let's check that voltage here uh, on our test point. And I'll put this on DC volts. And let's see, four volts DC, okay. So four volts DC should equate to an eight kilohertz uh, clamp level. So here we are at 5.4 and the output's tracking and it's tracking as we go up. I've now exceeded eight kilohertz, but it's uh, at the eight kilohertz level there. And if we need to fine tune that we can, uh, let's say, you determine that 8 kilohertz is where you want to be to avoid a fuel cut problem from a, a reading that's too high coming from your sensor. Well, you can turn it down. And you can see I just went half a turn. It's now gone from 8 to 7.7. .7. Another half a turn uh, at 7.4. So you can get an idea of how much it changes as you change this setting. Well, let's say you want to set a low clamp level. And let's say you have a mass airflow sensor that has a signal that decreases as flow increases. And uh, we could run our voltage down, say, to one volt. And uh, as we do, of course, the output frequency is going down because we're still in a high clamp mode. I set it to one volt. And with a high clamp mode, it's two kilohertz. So one out of five is like 20%. So there's my two kilohertz out of a 10 kilohertz full scale. Let's say I now switch this over. So we're clamping low instead of high. Flip on switch five. And now 8.4 kilohertz in, 8.4 out. And we head down and we track until we fall below two kilohertz and there it's limiting there. Now it turns out there's another wire coming out of the FC2 and that's this orange wire and that's used for turning on an external load and I can demonstrate that by hooking up this fan which turned on. Now if I turn the frequency back up so I'm now above the clamp level and I'm tracking the fan turns off and if I fall below, well, the fan turns on. And uh, there is a wiring diagram in the data sheet that shows that this orange wire is used to turn on this automotive relay. This orange wire pulls to ground when it goes active, and that is tied to the low side of the relay coil. The high side of the relay coil is tied to 12 volts. So when this yanks down, it closes the contacts on the relay, and it can turn on any load you want. It could be a fan. It could be a shift light, it could be any load that you choose. So that's what the orange wire is used for. I'd like to show you an example of how things go in the 100 hertz range. So we're going to go back down to 100 hertz and let's change our clamp level again. I'll set this to say 4.5. And with a 4.5 out of 5, that's going to be 90% of full scale. So if I'm on a 100 hertz range, and this is set to 4.5, 
that means I should have a high limit of 90 hertz. And so we're at 18 hertz and tracking and going up and it should limit when I get to 90. So there I am, 95 in, 90 out. And um, an example of a signal that would be in this low frequency range would be uh, a one cylinder rate tack signal or a vehicle speed signal. And in fact, vehicle speed sensors output a frequency roughly equivalent to a mile per hour reading. So for example, a vehicle speed sensor gives you logic pulses and roughly something like a 95 hertz for 95 miles an hour. Now let's say you wanted to eliminate the top speed limiter on your vehicle. Let's say you have a race car and there's a place where you're limited on the racetrack because uh, the car can go faster uh, than the limiter allows it to, so you want to get rid of that. So provided you have the correct speed rating of your tires, you can put this device on there and limit your speedometer reading to 90 and you may have a, a, a vehicle speed limiter that's say 95, just for example, and you know this continues going up, that holds at 90, and you never activate the vehicle speed limiter. Uh, another thing you might do in this frequency range would be to adjust for different size tires. So let me set this adjustment down to 2.5 volts because 2.5 volts is the neutral setting when you're doing the calibration mode. So I'll run this down and at 2.5 uh, the frequency output is going to equal the input in calibrate mode. So let's just run this back down so it's within our range. Say we set it to something like 50 miles an hour. And we're gonna turn on switch six, that puts us into calibrate mode. So I've got 50 in, 50 out, that's great. Um, let's say though that my speedometer is reading 50 miles an hour, but the true uh, miles per hour of the vehicle is 60. So I can just fix that. I'll just put my little tweaker on here and uh, run this up to 60. So 50 hertz in, 60 out, just like that. And uh, it, it'll track, of course, over the whole range. So if I run this, say, down to 25, I get 30 out. So it's a proportion. And you can increase or decrease the frequency, uh, and that's a, by a, a, a factor, and that will work over the whole frequency range. Uh, of the application. So there's a quick introduction to most of the features of the FC2-100 and uh, hope that was of interest. Thanks for watching.